Good evening, my brothers and sisters. Back with part three. The gospel must be preached to the poor. Oh, let us get started. The gospel is to be preached to the poor. Who is the gospel and who are the poor? We've already established in part one and two that that the gospel is Christ and Christ alone is the gospel. It is the gospel of salvation. It is the gospel of the spirit because God is the spirit. And according to Romans 8, 9, the spirit of Christ is the spirit of God, which makes Christ the gospel. Who are the poor? Matthew 5, 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. The poor in the spirit must become kingdom rich by the spirit of God. The dead, he didn't say blessed are the dead in spirit, the dead don't know they're poor. Only one made alive by Christ's spirit knows that they're poor. They see their spiritual destitution. They see their true spiritual condition. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who do thirst and hunger for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Well, the, the dead can't hunger or thirst for righteousness. They have no appetite for it. They have no appetite for it. Only those born into the spirit of Christ begin to hunger and thirst for the things of Christ. And they're going to be filled. They're going to be filled with that eternal wealth because we are debtors to the spirit. So we know who's the gospel and we know who's the poor. Let us get started in the teaching. Romans 9, 8. Romans 9, 8. They which are the children of the flesh... These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as the seed. The children of the flesh are the non-gospel Bible-based church. The children of the, of the spirit are the gospel body. The biblical church was given to us after the fall. The, the letter of Christ was given to us after the fall. That's how the biblical church came about. We had the letter in the flesh while being dead in our sins and trespasses, as fallen gospel, as fallen from the gospel as spiritual men and women, we fell from Christ in the spirit. We were dead in our sins and trespasses. We were spiritually dead as, as spiritual men and women. So we had the letter in the flesh while being dead in our sins and trespasses under law, under the law in the spirit. And the letter gave us church. Now church, the biblical church in the flesh for the male and the female was a shadow and type of the gospel that was to come back to the spiritual man and woman where we we as spiritual men and women would be born again so we had the biblical church which was a, which was a shadow and type in the flesh the male and the female is the shadow and type of the spiritual man and woman so the biblical church was the shadow and type in the flesh of the gospel that was to come in the spirit and i made mention of this in in teaching number 2 that Flat, the, the biblical church really doesn't have anything to do with the gospel. It has really nothing to do with being Christian. When we were in the biblical church, we were biblically active. But don't confuse being biblically active with being gospel fruitful. The gospel is eternal. It'll never end. But biblical activity in the flesh is temporary. It will end. And it, end, it ended in this dispensation of the gospel, which we, which we are in now, Galatians 24, 25. 24 says, for the law, or the letter of the law, the letter of Christ was our schoolmaster unto the gospel of Christ, that we would be justified by faith. For the law was our schoolmaster unto Christ, that we would be justified by faith. The letter of Christ in the flesh was our schoolmaster unto the gospel of Christ in the spirit, so we would be justified by the faith of the spirit. 25, but once faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. You're freed from the biblical church because now the biblical male and female has to be torn down through the building up of the, of the gospel man and woman to get them out of the way of the gospel because the the biblical male and female if not torn down 
in the flesh. They will get in the way of the building up of the born of the born again gospel man and woman in the spirit. And the flesh will become a hindrance to the spirit. So the flesh has to be torn down and taken out of the way. The biblical male and female, they were not meant to last. They were not designed to, excuse me, they were not designed to last. They were temporary. How do we know they were temporary? If we had never failed, we would have never had the Bible because there'd have been no need for the Bible because there'd have been no need for anything to point us back to Christ if we had never fell from Christ. The Bible was given to us as male and female in the flesh to point us back to Christ in the spirit, but it couldn't reveal the spirit. So because it pointed us to the light, but couldn't reveal the light, we were in biblical darkness. And anybody following the letter of the spirit is blinded to the gospel of the spirit until this day, they're still in biblical darkness. So once we're in the gospel body, the church mentality has to be destroyed. Because the male and the female has to get behind the gospel band and the woman as they're led forth of the gospel of Christ. The male and the female must come under the government of the first fruits of the man and the woman, which is Christ. So the church mentality is the biblical church mentality. It's a mentality that has to be destroyed because it will get in the way of the gospel. 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There's gospel liberty. There's gospel liberty. You're liberated from the world, the flesh, and the devil. You're liberated from the flesh to take dominion by the power of Christ over the flesh. Romans 10, 1, 2, and 3, and Paul talked about the importance of this, separating uh the letter of Christ from, from the righteousness of Christ in Romans 10, 1 through 3. Paul says, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. The biblical church has a zeal of God, but not according to gospel knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness by revelation of the Spirit and going about to establish their own righteousness according to the letter of the Spirit have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. They have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God, for Christ is the end of the law of righteousness. When you go from the biblical church to the gospel body, you go from being submitted to a pastor from it, you go from being submitted to, to a pastoral office to being submitted to the gospel of Christ, which is the Spirit of Christ. James 4 7. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Gospel translation. Submit yourself to the gospel. Resist the devil and he shall flee from you. He shall flee from you. So Paul says they have a zeal of God, but it's not according to righteousness. It's no good. They're biblically active, but they're not God. They're, they're biblically active as male and female, but they're not gospel fruitful as men and women. They have not spiritually matured back into the eternal image of Christ, wherein is the eternal wealth of Christ. And many of them, they're not even poor. They're still dead. They're still dead. They're in Adam, and in Adam all die. I think it's uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 22, I believe. But in Christ shall all be made alive. They're in the biblical church. They're not in Adam. In Adam are you made alive. I mean, in Christ are you made alive. In Christ do you see your poverty, not in Adam. Second uh, Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. Paul talked about they being ignorant of God's righteousness. And we're going to see it again in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. For if our gospel is hid, it is hid from those who are lost. In whom the God of this present age, Antichrist, had blinded the minds, that's the spirit, has blinded the mind of the spirit of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You see, the, the enemy, the devil, Antichrist, uses the Bible of Christ to blind them to the gospel of Christ. They're blinded to the truth. 
and they're having the letter preached as, as the gospel. But the letter is not the gospel. The Bible is not the gospel. The Bible is not the gospel. The Bible is not Christianity. The Bible is good if it is used lawfully, but it is when it is used to blind you to the truth and not to bring you to the revelation of truth, then you got a serious problem that has to be exposed. Let's go to Luke, uh, Luke 12, 15. Luke 12, 15 says that a man's a man's identity does not exist in the abundance of things which he possesses. He said, beware of covetousness for a man's life or his existence does not exist in what he possesses in the flesh, but it's in the revelation of Christ in the spirit. Beware about measuring your walk with God based on what you might possess in the flesh. You see, the lost religious world, they call blessed the material things that they have as male and female. And they measure a, a walk with a false God based on that. And that's dangerous. That's dangerous. Because material wealth is not forever. Eternal wealth is. So your life does not consist in the things which you possess in the flesh. That's not what your identity is. But your identity is in the life of Christ, in the gospel of Christ, in the spirit. Which means material things don't make you rich. Material things don't make you gospel rich. Material things follow gospel wealth. But what Antichrist does, he's giving the biblical church material things outside of gospel wealth. He's using false prosperity to blind them to true prosperity, just like he's using the letter of Christ to blind them to the gospel of Christ. Luke 17, 20. Where it is written, Jesus tells his disciples in the flesh at the time, because he was in the flesh, he says, the time will come when they will say, look here or look there. But he says, go not with them. He says, for the kingdom of God shall neither be here nor there, but the kingdom of God shall be in you. The kingdom of God is the spirit of God. And the spirit of God, the spirit of Christ is where the poor in Christ become rich in Christ. See, as they, as they eternally mature back into the image of Christ, they're maturing back into the wealth of Christ. This is what 2 Corinthians uh, 4, 3 and 4 says, that they, they've been blinded to the gospel, which is Christ, who is the image of God. See, as you mature into the image of uh, Christ as a gospel man and woman, you're maturing in the spiritual wealth of Christ. You're going from being spiritually poor to being spiritually rich. And as you spiritually, spiritually mature in the wealth of Christ, in the spirit, you're going to bear his likeness as a male and female in the flesh, according to the first fruit sanctification of the spirit. That's where the likeness is. That's where you become Christ-like. The male and the female bear his image, his likeness in the flesh through the man and the woman being restored back to his image in the spirit. This is why the biblical male and female has to be torn down as the gospel man and woman is being built up and taken out of the way because they will block progress. They will block progress. Galatians 1, 15. Galatians 1, 15. Let's go to it right quick. Galatians 1, 15. 15 and 16. But when it pleased God, Galatians 1, 15, 16. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, Separating him from his mother's womb simply means he separated him from the flesh unto the spirit to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Anything non-gospel is heathen, is heathenistic. Immediately, I conferred not with flesh and blood because flesh and blood cannot in inherit the kingdom of God, cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So immediately he conferred by, by his spirit. Because Christ called him by the power of his spirit. All right. So when you're chosen for the gospel, you don't respond with flesh and blood. That's religion. That's according to the letter of the spirit. You die to flesh and blood and you're risen to the newness of life in the mind of your spirit. You're risen to the newness of life in the mind of your spirit.
Philippians 4.19, for my God shall supply all your needs, that's your needs in the flesh, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus in the spirit. Because we have worry in the flesh, we have stress in the flesh once we're born of the spirit. And we hear that everything is spiritual. Well, how is it going to take care of the flesh? But it's already taken. The flesh is already taken care of. The needless prosperity of the man and woman will take care of the needs of the male and the female. It's already in the gospel. John 6, 63. It is the spirit that makes alive. The flesh profits nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit, they are life. Gospel translated. It is the gospel that makes alive. It is the gospel of Christ that makes alive. The letter of Christ profits nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Didn't he say in John 4, 24, they that walk with the, uh, the Lord must walk with him in spirit and in truth? Well, the words he speaks unto you, they are spirit and they are life. He did not say the words I have written unto you, they are spirit and they are life. We are in the dispensation of the gospel of the spirit. The biblical church had its time. It's past now. It was only temporary for a time. When you're born into the gospel of the spirit, your soul and body dies to the letter of Christ and your spirit is risen to the newness of the spirit in the life of Christ. And as you're transformed by the gospel in the mind of your spirit, your soul is redeemed and mortal body quickened. That's made alive by the first fruit sanctification of the spirit. Now the gospel man it's, it's going to take authority over the biblical male. The gospel female, a uh, woman, is going to take authority over the biblical female because the flesh is now under the government of the spirit and the letter has now come under the light of the spirit. So that the biblical male and female will be out of the way of the spirit because they will hinder progress. They will hinder progress. They will block the progress of the gospel man and woman because the male and female only can follow what it sees. They have to come under the government of what the of who the gospel man and woman knows and that's Christ. And that's Christ. Let us go to Mark 10, 6, 9. Mark 10, 6, 9 as we come to a close. But from the beginning of the creation of God, God made them male and female. Who was made? The male and the female. Who was created? The man and the woman. The spiritual man and the woman. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. But it's really talking about the male and female. Because the spiritual man and woman cannot leave the mother and father because the spiritual man and woman did not come from the mother and father. They came from the mind of Christ. They go back to the, they go, they go back they came from the spirit of Christ. They go back to Christ. Whereas the, bibli the biblical male and female or non-biblical male and female came from the earth and they go back to the earth. These physical temples are for our indwelling on planet earth. Once we depart from these temples, we no longer need them. They're put off. We have an eternal temple. We have eternal temples waiting on us. Now there's two temples. There's the eternal temple that will live in eternal pleasure with Christ, or there's the eternal temple that will be apart from Christ in eternal punishment. So even the wicked have a body waiting on them. And the two shall be, and the two shall be one flesh. <clears throat> and then they are no more two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God had joined together, let no man put asunder. But that was in the dispensation of the letter of Christ. We're now in the gospel of Christ. So they go from be, the two being one, one flesh to the gospel man and woman being one in the spirit. Because the two, the two came together as one. The gospel man and woman, they literally become one. They literally become one. And when the gospel man and woman becomes one in the intimacy of the, in the marital intimacy of the spirit, is going to govern the male and the female according to the fruit of the spirit. And the reason I, 
I touched here because it's going to bring us into where we're going next. And it'll be separating the gospel, separating the intimacy of the gospel man and woman from the biblical intercourse of the male and female. Remember, the letter was given to the male and the female in the flesh, not the gospel man and woman in the spirit. So when we fell from the gospel of Christ and we found in our flesh was founded on the letter of Christ, intercourse became a substitute for intimacy. Now being born back into the gospel of the spirit, we're born back into the marital intimacy of the spirit and the intimacy being intimacy being the fruit of love is going to take intercourse being the act of love to the next level. We have to distinguish the act of love in the flesh from the fruit of love in the spirit. Intimacy is the fruit of love. Intercourse is an act of love. As spiritual men and women, we can have intimacy, but not intercourse. As gospel male, as biblical male and females, we can have intercourse, but not intimacy. One was designed to divinely enrich and govern the other, but you can't have one without the other. Intercourse without intimacy is done in the depravity of lust, not love. When you can distinguish the fruit of love from the act of love, you can really bless your children then and prevent them from becoming baby mamas and baby daddies. That is happening because they don't know the difference between intimacy and intercourse. Intercourse is not intimacy. Animals can have intercourse, but they can't have intimacy. We were created higher than animals. We should, we should live higher than animals. And that'll be the next teaching we'll be going into. Uh, knowing the difference between gospel intimacy and biblical intercourse. You remember, you died to the flesh and you were risen to the newness of life in the spirit. We have to walk in the uncommon knowledge of the spirit. The world doesn't have it. The world doesn't have it. It's in the gospel of Christ and only the man and the woman have access to it, not the male and the female. It will govern the male and the female through the inheritance of the man and the woman. I love you and I thank you. Look forward to being with you in the next teaching.